Hey painting friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today and next time, maybe this is either going to be two or three parts, this painting tutorial here. We are going to recreate this painting. This is an acrylic painting on 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel. Uh, the landscape featured here is La Trobe Country Club Golf Course with the covered bridges. Arnold Palmer's dad actually helped to uh, bring this concept to life and he helped design the back nine of this course and wanted to incorporate these covered bridges for the golf carts to drive under as they go from one hole to the next. So this is a beautiful little summer morning at La Trobe Country Club. We're gonna start this painting off in real time and then we're gonna start speeding things up in the next couple videos uh, because things get a little repetitive. So let's get started with the beginning of this painting tutorial. So my materials for today are a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel. I have a paper palette. Uh, you can get these at craft stores or online. I like to use these now because they're pretty easy to clean up. You just tear the sheet off and you're all done with it. I have soft body Liquitex acrylic paints. Most of them are those today. I have a couple heavy body paints in here too, but most are soft bodied. I will leave the colors list in the description under this video, but to quickly name the colors, we have bronze yellow, yellow ochre, magenta, titanium white, Mars black, flesh tint, cadmium free yellow medium. This one's Indian yellow. It's a different brand. Uh, this one is vivid lime green. This one's light blue violet. Um, burnt Umber, this one is Bright Aqua Green, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Sap Green, we need a lot of that today, Thalo Green, this is just a uh, heavy body titanium white, so it's just a thicker paint. Uh, they, they have the same amount of pigment in them, but the consistency is thicker in the heavy body paints. And I also have Burnt Sienna and Cadmium Red Hue, not Cadmium Red Super Saturated, but the Hue. So. Those are my colors for today. I have some napkins for wiping down my brushes. I have a little cup of water. And for our brushes today, we have a variety uh, of flat tip brushes. These two are both flat tip. Uh, one has a shorter bristle that will make it easier for kind of pushing the paint around as opposed to gliding over top of other layers. The longer one's better for that. I have two flat tip brushes that are starting to get a little bit frayed, which is good for some grasses. I have this uh, large angled brush that I'm gonna use for just getting some base color down in the sky and the reflection on the water, little filbert brush, semi-round brush, and two more round tip brushes that are both a little more on the frayed side as well. All right, to get started, I'm going to use the grid method. So I have a grid lined up on my main reference image. I'm referencing four different photos to create this painting. Um, so bear with me with that. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little confused when I'm making up a whole new uh, scene. But basically every four inches, we want to put a tick here. This is going to give us our grid. but the grid matches up on my main reference image. And that is what I'm going to use to sketch out this concept. All right, so now we've got our grid roughly sketched out. And the next step is to sketch out the layout for our crop for the painting. So. I first am going to sketch out the line where the background hillside meets the sky. So like it's kind of the horizon line, but it's like the hillside meeting the sky. And that's kind of just bumpy ridges. You can see all the treetops here. And I want to keep this all above my top grid. Just like that. And then everything above that sky, everything below that is land or water. And then next we have kind of another contact here where the course meets the trees and the out of bounds area, the forest. So I'm just looking at where this is on my photo. 
starting to sketch it in on my painting. I'm just watering down my acrylic paints a little here so it'll dry more quickly and not be super opaque. And this is where things are gonna change a little, where the course is in my actual painting versus the reference photo. So I'm not gonna get too crazy with that. And we've got the cart path. I might as well get that in here. Just a little squiggly. Bottom of the cart path is like here, so I went a little too far there. And then we've got a line. So here's halfway between this one and this one. This line's a little lower than halfway. And it's pretty much a horizontal line. It doesn't look perfectly horizontal in the image, but I guess it does come down a little here. Basically comes right to this. So I'm gonna pull this line up again, just a little bit there. I mean, a little slip up, but that's why we use the grid method. So that helps us to fix these things before you start actually painting. Okay, then we've got a covered bridge and the covered bridge comes down just a little more. The, it's like right on this line is where we have a vertical line for the front of the bridge. And then you don't quite see this line there, but if you had to connect them, that's how that would look. And it doesn't come, this is halfway here, it doesn't come halfway, it comes more like to here. So that's the outer part of the bridge. This is just, went too far with that line. And then the angle of the roof is a little more shallow than what I put down originally, so let's fix that. And then the angle for the slope, like the horizontal part of the bridge, because it's going back into the distance, it's more like this angle. And then let's see, we've got Somewhere off of here, we have a um, point, horizon point for, or a perspective point for this. So somewhere over here, so we want this line to come all the way out to here basically, and if this one was straight, it would come basically out to there too. Starts a little lower. So basically these are a little farther apart and these are a little closer together there. Then you want to have your horizontal, or your vertical. <laughs> line there and that is exactly where it is in my photo in comparison to from left to right it's about halfway between the halfway point and then there's a little gap there and this one's gonna come a little closer too but not too much And let's fix this angle. This angle's steeper than this angle. And that we don't need. <clears throat> okay, and then next we wanna do the same thing. This one's gonna have something like that. And then we got, this is basically on the same line as that one. And then we've got a gap over here. So 
Painting structures is definitely more challenging than just painting a landscape, at least for me, because you have to follow the rules of perspective. And I have way more experience following the rules of landscape painting. <laughs> so I just slow down a little bit. I'm not quite as fast when it comes to painting structures. Okay, so there's the basic structure for this. This is all in shadow here. Just gonna fill that in so you can tell. And then you don't see this um, line behind there. This is all like a red color there. So there's our covered bridge. Let's keep moving up here. There's a creek that this bridge goes over. There's a little bit of grass there. And this point comes to about right there. So we're just gonna draw a straight line, connect those. And then we've got like a shadow in here. Can't quite see the water with the bridge, but it's implied that it's over a creek. And then let's continue this this way. Got a contact point between the grass. Let's see, the grass is there. Oops, here we go. Right here, we've got some well-trimmed grass. And then below that, we've got rocks. And then we've just got reflections. So we're gonna have a reflection of the rocks. And then a little bit of grass and stuff over, over the rocks. Just gonna do little squigglies for now. And then we've got reflection of the little uh, covered bridge. So we just carry this line down all the way to see where that would be. And that's where that reflection line will be right down there. Carry this one down. That's where that one's gonna be. And then your angles are, let's see. Your angles are pretty parallel to what your angles are up here. Except for the roof is kind of the opposite, but. Also can't see as much of the roof on this side, on the reflection side. But you still want this point to come down where that is. Okay, and then we've just got a sh reflection of the tree line. Which is there. And then one more thing I wanna sketch out. I guess a couple more things. So first we got a bunker. Right back here. I'm gonna put it right there. And then we've got the green. Putting green. And I also wanna put some trees here. Trees come up to about here, pine trees. Got one 
here. One leg right here. Sometimes it helps if you just put the little vertical tree trunk in. Got another tree line back here. There's one over here too. And then there's like a field. Comes to about right here. And these trees are all there. All right, so that was kind of a lot just to get that sketched on, but that's gonna save a lot of time when we start the actual color filling in for the painting. We're gonna start at the top and then work our way down. I might get a little bit of this top color down in the reflection while I have that color blended, um, but in general, we're gonna start what's in the background and make our way to the foreground. Okay, we're gonna start with our large angled brush, taking some of our uh, heavy bodied white a little bit of ochre and a little flesh tint. And I'm gonna take a little bit of soft bodied white too. And we're just gonna start putting this color down right over that horizon line. Gonna blend a hint of cadmium yellow in there. Bring it down right to that horizon line. Make sure that if you are trying to recreate this painting that the um, sketch is dry. Just going back and forth. Then we're gonna take a little bit of flesh tint, some more white. Just blend that up. And then we're gonna take a little bit of our light blue violet and some more white. Maybe a tint, a little tiny bit of that bright aqua green and put this at the top of the canvas. Make sure you totally cover up all your little tick marks and any other little paint marks that may be on the canvas. Everyone's going back and forth, blending these colors all in together. And then we're gonna take this same color, put this at the base of the canvas. A little more white and light blue violet and the bright aqua green. That at the bottom. Take some more white, a little flesh tint, a little bit of cad yellow and ochre. Let's bring that right down to where you painted that tree line in. And just go back and forth so you get really good coverage of paint. Good. 
Now we're going to put that brush in the water and we're going to grab this filbert brush and now we're going to blend some phthalo green into that white color, mix a little bit of burnt umber and some ultramarine blue, some light blue violet. Just keep blending those colors until you get a good, this makes a little magenta in there too. A little more blue. All right, pretty happy with that. And then you're just gonna take your brush and just kind of push the paint around right up to where you put your sky color. And by kind of tw twisting the brush around and pushing it with a good amount of force at different angles, that's gonna give you the tree line look. And this is going to come right up to here where you have more trees in the foreground. And then we're going to take just some white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Maybe a hint of bright aqua green. And I'm just going to take that color. This is like the mist kind of rising up. Just put this color all the way down into that next little horizon line or that next line where you meet the next row of trees closer to you. And then once you get the paint down, take the extra paint off your brush so it's really dry and then just kind of push it around at different angles again. Go back and forth a little bit. You want to kind of soften it, but have a couple little ridges visible. And you can always take a little bit more of that dark color and build up a few more little trees in there. Okay, now we're moving forward some more. We're gonna take some sap green Blend that with our phthalo green. You can add a hint of yellow ochre. A little bit of ultramarine blue. And do a little bit of light blue violet. And now this one is going to go up here. gonna blend a little bit of this color into my color behind it and just add a couple more little tree tops in there And let's take a little more ultramarine blue, light blue violet. Start to add some mist for these ones while this is still wet.
Taking more white and light blue violet. Start at the base of this tree line. Just kind of work your way up. Because we're using acrylic paint, we have to work relatively quickly here while adding this mist. Got to do it while the paint is still wet enough that you can blend. Start to add a few more little ridges that start to get lost in the mist. You always want it to be a little darker at the top of that layer of trees. You can mix a little bit of sap green in, maybe a hint of yellow. Starting to lighten up some more. Do a little bit more of the cool bluish mist over here. And we're gonna take some yellow with some sap green and phthalo green, a little white. And we've got some highlights here where sunlight's hitting these trees. I'm just using the filter brush and putting that highlight right on the edges on of the trees where light's reaching. And there's like a tiny bit of a lighter green in here too. And then over here, we've got a lot of light. So we're gonna take more of our yellow, take some vivid lime green and some ochre. Tiny, tiny dab of phthalo. Let's put these guys here. And then for the shadows, we want sap green and magenta. 
and some phthalo green. And now we can actually switch to the smaller flat tip brush. We're getting closer enough to the foreground where I want to start to add a little bit more detail in these trees. So I'm just blocking in the basic shapes for the shadows in this one. Then we want a little more magenta and some white and some light blue violet for over here. I actually need more white. At the base, our, we still have some mist, so we got to work that saturation down, the contrast down. We got to bring up the value a little bit for all this mist down here. Bring a little bit more. Magenta into the picture, a little more sap green. Things are starting to get darker as you come back up. With that, take a little more vivid lime green and some flush tint. It's going to be this hillside back here. Still misty, kind of in shadow. Just want to cover up all that space. I can take a little ultramarine blue, cool it down even more over here. Maybe a little bit of phthalo. All right, then we got trees in front of that. We're gonna take more sap green, some magenta, and some bronze yellow. If you have a yellow oxide, this is close to yellow oxide. And some cad yellow medium, cad free yellow medium. Still using my flat tip brush here. These are pine trees, so I'm just going back and forth, starting to get some little angles for the branches. And then we want to darken this value again. So I'm going to mix a little black with my green and some oxide. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm, need more brown. Let's bring this down. In this section, things actually get darker. Mixing in more red and brown and a little bit of ultramarine. Yeah, let's mix a little bit of red in there too. So we no longer have all the mist visible. We're close enough in the foreground where the mist isn't really there. And things are darker where they're at the base of this tree line in shadow here. But this still is kind of far away in the distance. So I'm going to blend some white in there. Make it a little less in your face. Okay, I'll just carry this out over here. Yellow with phthalo and light blue violet, ochre, sap green, and white. Let's do a little more sap green 
And I'll mix a little brown in there too. That's like my shadow color. Let's mix a little bit of red. That's better. So there's where I put that bunker. And then for the putting green, we want to mix some more white in there, more vivid lime green, um, some yellow, a little bit of aqua, mm, let's do more aqua. All right, and then there's going to be there's some sunlight peeking through here, so I'm just going to take some yellow with some vivid lime green and just add a couple little highlights from sunlight peeking through here. Mixing a little bit of white in there too. There's some right on the putting green. I'm going to switch to the small brush, mix some white with some light blue violet with some ochre and some brown and a little bit of black and magenta. Well, this is all in shadow, so I'll just put that little bunker in there. Let's do the car path while we're at it. We have a color similar here. We're going to mix more brown and black into that bunker color and just fill this in with that. Mix a little more white and flesh tint. Oh yeah, I also forgot there's a cart path. This, uh, the cart path goes through the little tunnel, so... Gotta add our little cart path here, too. Alright. And then this part's pretty easy. All the fairway, we're just gonna mix some... Thalo green with bright aqua green, and then some... Umber and some ochre and some white and more aqua. And it's really early in the morning. The sun's just coming up over the mountains, so we have this cooler aqua -y green color. Starts out really light there. And then it gets darker, more brown, and let's see ultramarine blue, a little more aqua, and some sap green too. Yep. This side over here's got a little more of that sap green and brown mixed in. And just keep your brush strokes kind of running the same way as the grass cut lines in the fairway. So like this, keep it parallel. Mix a little more of the light color. It's a little too light. I could put that over here though.
There we go. And you can see this through the tunnel. Then we'll add a little more light blue violet and sap green as it gets farther away, a little more sap green. Yeah. And we can make the value a little bit lighter too. Should be a lot lighter than the green area behind it. And then we just connect them right down to your roof. a little bit of yellow in here and go right up to your cart path and then we got lots of yellow with some phthalo green some ochre more yellow, some Indian yellow, and white. That's like, that's the color. A little more down here. Still need more yellow. And we got some of these, mix a little bit of blue in there too. Some of these shadows are kind of on the fairway from hill slopes and grass cut lines. grass cut lines here. Wanted to get more farly, more spread apart the farther you get towards the foreground. You can keep them pretty rough. They don't definitely don't want them to look like perfect little lines. And you could take some more aqua and light blue violet and white. Kind of touch up a little bit back here.
Has some little highlights going the opposite direction or perpendicular to all of your other marks. And there we got some little highlights for some light peeking through. Make sure these follow the slope. Just want to lighten up this background with a little flesh tint, just a tad here. I want this to separate from the tree line behind it a little more. There we go. Okay, and then we got to get these little highlights in on the cart path too. I'm just going to redo the cart path. Get some more magenta, brown, phthalo blue. And we're gonna make it a little wider as it's getting closer to the viewer. And then we got some little highlights. We'll just use some white, ochre, and magenta and flesh tint. So just connect the dots, connect the lines where you have highlights on the cart path. And you can always touch it up. Add a couple a little more highlights back here. All right, and then let's take our sap green with some umber and a little bit of Indian yellow. Just add these shadows down here. where we've got the creek and then over here this one comes way down here Mix a little bit of blue in here, a little more umber. And I'll take some phthalo blue and add a shadow. Let's see, where are my rocks? Is it, that's a reflection. Okay, this is where the land meets water. more brown. So my values very dark for the shadows in the foreground because they're super close to the viewer and the shadows way back here have more white and less like more white blended in less saturation so mixing complementary colors to make more neutral colors there. All right, and then for the rocks, those are gonna be like a grayish, bluish color. Put these in here. Got 
Mix a little brown in there. That's where the rocks are gonna go. And then for the shadow, we'll take, or the reflection, we'll take a little more blue and just make like a more cooler, cooler, make a cooler version of that. Reflection of the barn. Let's take some red, black. And some blue, ultramarine. And some brown. A little light blue violet. I'll mix a little bit of yellow. And I'll take some more red. Some ochre, a little bit of Indian yellow, and we'll just mm, let's take some flush tint too. Keep our brush strokes up and down because that's the way the wood is on this and let's take a little bit more black with our shadowy color and i'm going to bring this shadow up all right and we'll take our other flat tip flat tip brush and we're going to take some of our Uh, yellow oxide mixed with yellow ochre. Just kidding, I don't want that brush. <laughs> Let's take our small round tip brush. Used to be a flat tip brush, now it's round. <laughs> We've got these little support pole things here.
There we go. Easy fix. Now the covered bridge is looking a little better there. Let's next let's just add some shadows to this tree here. We'll use our flat tip brush. Take some umber and sap green and some red and some ochre. And that's gonna be our shadow color. Just gonna touch up that real quick there. Alright, and this one is also a pine tree. Just making everything dark on this tree for now and we'll add those highlights later. Because there are some pretty nice highlights on this one. And we need some more sap green with a little bit of vivid lime green for these shadows back in here. There's maybe like a hint of this aqua green and some magenta mixed with sap green. Maybe a little bit of light blue violet too for the higher up part. Yep. Okay, this one is here. And we'll add a little bit of black Or sap green. This one kind of overlaps those trees in the background there. And then it's more sap green and brown down here. Really dark. And that continues for a lot of this area here. Maybe a little bit of um, uh, bird sienna mixed with sap green and some yellow. Just keep adding yellow and burnt sienna to a little bit of um, yellow oxide color and just keep pulling this in. back to the burnt umber with some sap green. Can add a little bit more of that oxide color. Yeah, let's darken this up some more with a little more sap green.
Makes a little magenta in there. A little ultramarine. And let's take a little bit of phthalo green now too. Just blend it in with the other colors. And then over here we've got a lot of light. I'm going to mix my vivid lime green in with this color I had before. Some white. This value is brighter than what's behind it. Yeah, there's a lot of light right in here too. Squeaking in. And yeah, we'll go back to our sap green, phthalo green. Color, mix a little bit of light blue violet in there. And we'll just get our shadows going. It's a little bit darker down here. It's like straight up sap green down here. Got that filled in with some base color there. Let's take some phthalo green, sap green, bright aqua green. Ultramarine blue and ochre. And let's take more ochre. Mix a little flesh tint in there. And some more sap green. That's better. Okay, this is my shadowy color down here. I'll add a little more sap green. This is mostly in shadow. And then we've got some highlights that are just like yellow, vivid lime green, and ochre, and uh, the other yellow, Indian yellow. <laughs> Need some more white. Right up to here. A little bit in there 
to and then here got a nice highlight outside of the creek and then the rest of this is in shadow over here Then we got a really nice highlight right there. Just get super duper bright. into that gold color and then we got the cart path extending gonna put our shadowy cart path back Mixing more ah uh, yellow, <laughs> mixing more yellow ochre, a little sienna in our greens. Get these shadows in here. Mix a little bit of our aqua to cool this down. Got the reflection. Just gonna mix my reds with some blue, some brown. Then we're going to take some phthalo green and some ultramarine blue and some of that oxide and just put the trees in the water really quickly for now. Basically this is the tree line that has a reflection.
And now we have our base layer of paint down. So this is where we're going to stop for today. And then we'll pick back up with part two next time. In part two, I'm going to add detail everywhere and bring this painting to life. <laughs>